So hi and welcome to another video and today we're going to be taking apart the Model D here from Glorious. We're going to strip it down completely. I'm going to show you what kind of weight reduction you can get. And this video will also be useful for doing things like repairing it if it breaks or for replacing things like the power cord as well. So a few things you're going to get from this video today. I'm going to go into some great detail here. If you're not confident in doing a weight reduction yourself, I do offer this service on my beardybob.com website. So go and check that out. I'll put a link to the description for all the bits that I've used in this video to do that. We're going to be using a hairdryer to take the skates off. There are some other methods, but I haven't gone through those yet. We're going to use two sets of scales, a larger set for the higher weight and some smaller sets here to give us some good increments on the smaller components. We're also going to use a caliper here to measure things like the PCB, the scroll wheel, the encoder, the J5 connection as well for the cable if you want to do a power cord, like I said. And we've also got a cup of tea here to rehydrate as well. We do this going through the video. I'm going to be doing a full review on this video. I'll go into a lot more in-depth using charts and comparison charts and all the statistics I normally do. Haven't done that yet, I've got a few others to get through, but this Model D is on that radar and we're getting through that very soon, as well as Razer Viper, which a lot of people have been talking about as well. So let's get started and mod this thing. Okay, so let's start with hair drawing the feet off. Then let's take out the screws at the bottom, should be two in this. The shell should just come apart at the back here. Get a little bit of a wiggle and a voila. Nice and easy. Looks like it's built exactly the same as the Model O here. So we've just got to disconnect these rear LED cables. If you pull up this little switch at the back here, this little connector, left one and the right one. And you should just gently wiggle out like so. Alrighty. And that should disconnect the top shell, Jazz. So in the top shell, you can see here, we've got the two light strips like the Model O. DPI switch at the top. So we'll take out these, see if we can reduce any more weight on the front, see if we get out of it. So what's different here on the Model D is looks like they've kind of riveted these in plastic rivets here. They haven't screwed them in, which is a bit different, which is going to mean you're going to break them when you take them out. And they've also added a bit of foam here to stop the button rattle, which is interesting. I've not seen that before. So let's see if we can get these out without damaging the shell, but you are going to damage yours when you do this. All right, let's try and take off the rear part and see if there's some screws, because before we do that, it might be advisable. Let's have a quick look. Broke my nail. Lovely. Fucking nail, there we go. So you can see there's still no screw holes here. Definitely glued here. This is the screw hole for the side buttons. And the rear is optional here. You could leave it on, you could take it off, it's up to you. Some people like it, I don't mind the edge in here to be fair, when it's removed. Take the left and right mouse buttons off. Two clips at the back here, should just push out. Like so. I mean, these are obviously not optional, you need to have these on here, and I probably wouldn't draw them because I've already drawn the backs here. You could take a little bit more out, but you'll definitely feel it if you do that. Done quite a good job anyway here. More glorious have to take out the trimmings. Bit of tape on the edge here, so you start to see, hmm, maybe not the, the most finesse build. I don't know why they put tape down the edge in here. Maybe there's a bit of a squeak or something, I don't know. It looks a bit like a hot fix. <laughs> Again, we still can't take them out. You can see here where they've been bleeding. We'll have to use a soldering iron maybe to take these out. And all we've got left is a DPI button, which should just pull out, is it? Or is it fixed? Well, there's two clips here. Under the shell here. It's different designs we've seen before. Tight. They'll definitely change a few little bits here. Glorious. Clips do look like they're going to work, but they are tight in here. And we are going to out pings the DPI button. It leaves us with this shell with the side buttons in, so let's get that out. There'll be one screw here on the side, which there is. Which 
is a bit of a different style here. Normally most people don't screw them, they're generally clipped. Same screws as the uh, base as well. Again, more tape. It might be that they've trying to stop a bit of rattling. I mean, I like the idea of using tape, but that's not a uh, a good sign when you've got a tape on your buttons, right? These side buttons are not easy to get out. This, there's a bar here, can you see that? This bar here is holding them in. So you don't have to sort your side buttons without removing the RGB strip. And that's what they're using to add a bit of flex strength. Oops, using this part, holding the strength. Oh, okay. A little bit of a press on the side might allow you to get to these okay so if you push in the sides a little bit we can actually free these diffusers but they won't go back on you can't screw them on you could glue them back on there or tape them down which might be why glue is using some tape here there's only two rivet points on the front the led ones are riveted the diffusers well as you can tell i don't This leaves us with the LED strips, which mm, you can just push them out. These are definitely stuck in here. Try and leverage them, but they won't come out. We're gonna to have to move these top points here so you can slide them off this pit, this post. Try a screwdriver, see if we use a bit more force. You're gonna damage your LEDs. Like so. Went straight through that one, Bob, what slipped off, pushed it off. Yeah, so the LED is broken on that side. This is definitely a permanent remove. You're gonna have to break them off, like so. Now I don't advise that, because obviously you're gonna break your warranty and we're gonna add a bit more side flex, like say that post. Ow, hit me in the face. First light strips off, but we have damaged it. You can see there's a hole. Um, you could probably glue them back in there. They're probably still, uh, no, maybe not. That one's ripped on the actual connector. So good night to that one. You can see the additional post for a bit of side wall support. Now let's take out LED number two the same way. I mean, you could use an iron, hold solder iron here to melt these up, which might work. I'm a bit less impatient. I don't really want to put them back in anyway, so. But the shell is quite flexible you can see here because of all the plastic out of it they've definitely stripped a load of plastic here you can see they took a lot of it side buttons be careful when you're pushing this i can feel the shell flexing which i'm trying to support it behind it and when i'm pushing it it's spreading the shell out so just be careful you don't break your actual shell because that's something to be more catastrophic and i might end up doing it here as well to be fair all in the name of science There we go. Break the post, nice. Give it a bit of a wiggle on the rear, and the rear one should just ping off. Too like the front ones are easier to do. There we go. Is it the shell now? And we could drill on the edges here and take some out, but given the side, given the thickness of the wall, as you can see, a close here, I've added some support in the walls here. But given the flex and the shell, it is going to make it pretty bendable. Because you haven't got the support on the top here. Well, you've probably got quite a bit of plastic weight taken out, which is pretty good. So I'd probably leave the sides. So we can get out the base here. Looks like using Omron 20mm. Yeah, Omron 20 million switches in it. So we're doing a power cord swap here quite easy. You just pin the cable off, pull it off here. It's just standard setup. Nothing going to be too difficult once you've got the mouse open. Too many two rear pads need coming off. My pin connector. I think it was Hotkey off Reddit who wanted the pin connector size. So here you go, mate. Hodges, I've got your name wrong. So, on to the base. Well, we can certainly take the side buttons out. On the sides, it's using Hawano Greens. 
So we've got two screw points, one here, one here. What's always weird in these mice from Glorious is they have this raised LED like platform here to light up the scroll wheel. Take this one out, single screw, nice and easy. For me, I'm just gonna take it off. Bit of a wiggle on the old PCB here. If you wanna do this, it's up to you. This will obviously uh, be one that you have to re-solder back. If you wanna do it, you can do it. You could, unders you could unsolder it yourself or you can just wiggle it like I'm doing. It will break free. Hmm, it's left a bit of strands in there. I'll trim those off in a sec. So now the PCB, two clips at the rear, should just ping off. And then we have the PCB, so Glorious have opted to solder their cables on. It's an F switch encoder. Now, I'm going to take the side buttons off, but you don't have to do this. Again, this is one where you're going to have to resolder them back if you do it. But I want to see how light we can get it. What these mice tend to work without side buttons, I've not found one that doesn't yet. I'll give it a test after this, but it shouldn't have any issues whatsoever. See, Glorious is still using the 3360 sensor in this one, DM version. I thought they might go for 3389. I haven't touched the part yet, but it's a good sensor. That's leaves with the base, got an LED down here, diffuser. Probably wouldn't take it out. You could do it with a bit of a push by the looks of it. Like so. Pings out anyway, you can actually put that back in if you wish. That's gonna make much difference. It's got the remaining skates on the base here. Use a hairdryer to take them off, but I've got some spares, so I'll just ping them off with that. This is with the Model O base here, and to be fair, we probably take a bit of plastic out around the back here. You're not going to get much weight out of it, maybe a gram. If you did that, you could probably take out a bit where there's no supports. The drill most is mouse in, doing a good job with the base, so I probably won't bother. So that's the teardown. If you've got any problems you need to fix it, that'll help you out, I hope. But now we're going to put it back together and see what the final weight is here with some little weight reduction bits that we've done here as well. Let's check it out. So the first thing is to put the scroll wheel back together. And that's because the PCB will be a bit of a pain to get into the base once the scroll wheel's on it. Slot that bad boy back in. Yeah, boy. There's a bit of play in the PCB because we're going to put the screws in at the front. Now we could put the screws in. I'm not going to because I'm going to keep the weight out of it, but you could do. I expect the cable will probably hold it quite easily here, no problem. Let's put the cable back in. Easy with power cord mod here by Glowers, which was good, or to swap out with one of their cables. Push that back in, loops back around, and the little rubber piece pushes in the front of the base. Nice and easy. A little bit of a cable channel as well here. So we're going to leave the DPI button out. Anything we're going to put in the top left hand corner here. We don't want the DPI button. We don't want the left and right switches. We don't want the LED roll wheel diffuser, which means you don't need the glue. And we're not going to take the little LED diffuser from the base as well. Every little bit counts. We're going to leave the two screws out for the PCB. You could leave them in if you wish. We're going to leave the side diffusers off we don't want them. We're going to leave the side LEDs off because when we've broken them, they won't be easy to come out. Pretty sure on the model though they were screwed in, but I could be wrong, it's been a while. And we don't need the side button component either. All the little sticky bits we're going to take out, we don't leave these in either because it's literally the point. Doesn't leave us with much left to put in the model over here, does it? We'll leave the back plate off for now and we'll check to see what the weight reduction is without it and then we'll put it on so you can see with it because some people might prefer it on or off. It's going to be your choice. Put the left and right mouse buttons on, easy to do. You've got to make sure the front's hook over. Into these like, little pin, these little hooks inside the front here. And there's these little, I don't know what you call them, pushy bits <laughs> on the button. Um, push those over the front first and then just push the rear clips down. It should nicely snap into place. 
careful not to damage the clips because that'll be a bit of a pain. Oops. There we go. Runs it back in. Literally now we've just got to put the shell back together. So in the front back slightly if you've not done this before and then just push it into the front of the mouse and it'll put hooks on the front of the base and they'll clip in. And then, well, we've got two screws left here, which we don't need. One for the scroll wheel. Uh, one was for the side buttons. I can't remember what the other one was for. It's no biggie. And we'll put one in the base because we don't need two and it won't make a difference. It will reduce a little bit of weight. So this is about saving the maximum weight as we can. But you can see here with that in, you're going to have to pull it. Make the base flex a little bit. It's not going to move anywhere, so one screw is perfect. Put your feet back on. Now you could use the hair dryer here. It's a good tip to reheat them up to get the glue warm again and get it to be a bit stickier. Or you can use M3 tape underneath if they've lost the stickiness. Put them back in. You can see here even these front ones I just peeled off are pretty good. Wouldn't recommend that. I would use a hair dryer. Or another method you can find one. Can bend a little bit, but these are fine. These are quite thick, the ones here from Glorious. What I didn't do was see how thick they are. So let's see. And they are slightly rounded. So the Model D is now back built leave the back off it for a sec let's see what this, the uh, weight is the sides there's probably a little bit of flex here you can see that see on the right hand side so when you'll be holding it here you're going to be pushing it a little bit i can definitely feel that flex here on my finger now there's a bit of now there's no diffuser in there so like i said i won't take any more plastic outside i mean you have to give it a little bit of press in here and you're not really going to need to do that because you're not pushing the side button so i don't think you'll notice when you're playing it just bear in mind you're going to give a bit of flex extra flex by taking the diffuser out, which is using as a support here from Glorious. So let's see what the weight is without the back on. That is a light mouse at 52 grams for a Ergo here. The rear plate just snaps in place. Again, you can see it's not giving any support on the side flap here. So bear that in mind, it won't help you even if you take the diffuser out. Please, the final weight is 59 grams if you put the back on as well. So that's it, as you can see, we've done a good bit of weight reduction on the Model D here, even though it's a pretty well-built mouse and it's got a lot of weight reduction taken out of it, it's still quite sturdy. We managed to get some more weight out of it, in fact, nearly 20 grams. If you want to make a bit more of a sacrifice here, that's quite a bit. Well, it's about 30% of the weight here and just depends really what you want to do. Obviously, you can tailor this to what you would like. I could tailor it for you as well if you want. Just check out my billybob.com website. There's a shop on there and I can do these mice for you as well if you don't want to break it. And until the next video, I'll see you again. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.